observations. There has been a shift in the kinds of business major motion picture studios have done over the last 30 years. For me, my movie going really started in the 70s, but in the 80s and the 90s and the aughts, that's kind of when my career began in 89, working on Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 as a PA. And it's been interesting to watch the business of motion pictures change. One of the more exciting times that was going on when I first was working at Warner Brothers, what was called the spec script market was scorching hot, meaning the script was written on what was called speculation, meaning an original screenplay. And that's where we got people like Shane Black. He'd written Lethal Weapon, but one of the big spec scripts that went around when I was at the studio was The Last Boy Scout. When that script came out, everybody in Hollywood read it. The script sold for $1.75 million, and it was a big cause celeb that a script had sold for that much money. And the spec market was, it dominated the early 90s. And people like Joe Esterhaus sold Basic Instinct for like $3 million. Shane Black came back, and I think he sold The Long Kiss Goodnight for $4 million. And these movies were made for, you know, between anywhere from, I would say, $40 million to $80 million, depending. The biggest $100 million movie at the time had been Terminator 2, but that was seen kind of as an exception. But it was just a, it was just a different time, and the business was all looking for original ideas. But that was because movies, for the most part, were still underneath the $100 million range. I mean, Hunt for Red October, which is a big literary adaptation, that movie cost, what, $30 million? The Matrix, which came out in 99, Big spec script sale from the Wachowskis. The Matrix was an example of a spec screenplay that later became an IP. There are four Matrix movies. There's animated movies. There's video games. There's action figures. The Matrix was an original film that became an IP. But it was original. And of course, you could make the argument that The Matrix was an amalgamation of other, a lot of Japanese anime, a lot of previously existing ideas thrown together in a new kind of a blender with a little bit of philosophy and a whole lot of new technology. And the difference is these movies did not cost over $100 million. As a matter of fact, they didn't cost $80 million. And then the tide started to turn. Uh, movies were getting more and more expensive at the studio level. Even in the early 2000s, there were some really interesting things happening. Producer Roy Lee had the idea to take a lot of Asian movies, Korean films, Chinese movies, and Japanese films were doing some big business. And they were doing some innovative things, first with horror. The J-horror movement happened. And we got things like Ringu that was re remade by Gore Verbinski as The Ring. So there was a previously existing title in Asia, in Japan, and Roy Lee hooked up the rights to a lot of these successful films like Infernal Affairs got the remake rights and they were able to make The Departed. So Roy Lee was doing something very smart that no one thought of, which was getting the rights to these these great Asian movies and remaking them in America. And it was very successful because these movies could be made for very little money. They were already proven commodities somewhere else. But then he also had ideas like getting the Lego movie made. Roy Lee's kind of a hero of mine, I'll freely admit it. You know, I'm still going to make him apologize for the remake of The Stand, but hey, you take it where you can get it. But what was interesting was he was finding IP. He was finding previously existing material that could be turned into other movies, and he was good at it, and he was successful at doing so. What has happened in Hollywood is because movies have become so expensive, and because for a studio it's not good enough to make, say, a movie for $50 million, for Paramount, they make a $17 million movie like Smile, and it makes $200 million worldwide. That's an epic win. Paramount has a great year. And they're still in the toilet with their stock price and what's going on with Paramount+. Plus. So what studios are now looking to do is they want to spend $150 million or $200 million and make a billion. And they want to do that five or six times a year. If a studio were to make a $65 million movie that would make $300 million worldwide, that's not enough for them anymore. That is not a sustainable business model. And so the idea that we're ever going to get a Matrix or we're ever going to get, say, a Hunt for Red October that, by the way, kicked off the Jack Ryan series because Hunt for Red October was, was good. Then we got Patriot Games, 
We got clear and present danger. We got some of all fears. And then we got Jack Ryan shadow recruit. Where we're at now in Hollywood is the major motion picture studios can no longer make anything original. They're not going to make a matrix unless the matrix was a successful comic book or maybe a book. And they, they believe they can spend $150 million to make a billion. That's where we're at. That's the studio model right now, which I think is unsustainable. If you have two hours of time, people just want to be really entertained within that two hours. Do they need the spectacle of a $350 million Fast and the Furious franchise? Sure. And I'm going to go see Fast X. Looks like it's going to be entertaining. But it costs $350 million. Now, the real question is, is that movie going to be as successful as other Universal films? Like, oh, I don't know, E.T.? That movie made $400 million on a $10 million spend. Of course, that was in 1982, 40 years ago. But still, it's two hours of time. Two hours translated by the entertainment value, translated to audiences buying tickets. It's two hours of time. And if you think that all movies are between 90 minutes and two hours, who's to say, do you have to spend $200 million for those two hours? Or can you leave an audience equally entertained for $40 million or $50 million? Or let's go back the other way. Smile. Are people going to be as entertained by a smile as they are by Fast X? They might be the same amount of time, but smile costs $17 million and Fast X costs $350 million. Same amount of time. The motion picture studios no longer know how to spend $40, $50 million for two hours of programming. The people that they employ don't even know how to make a movie anymore for $50 million because they have to spend God only knows how much money on 500 million effects artists all over the world. So nobody even knows how anymore. You don't have powerhouse producers that can make a movie for 40, 50, 60 million dollars and turn around 300, 400, 500 million dollars in profit. Part of the problem with Hollywood right now in terms of spending is how movies are made and they need to figure out once again how to make them more effectively. Because I don't think movies have to cost as much as they do. Would you rather spend $350 million on the 11th entry into a franchise IP? A $350 million movie needs to make three to four times its budget to break even. So if it's $350 million, you're looking at $1.4 billion, I believe, as your break-even point. That's insane. When a franchise is successful, everybody gets a taste, which ups the budget, which has nothing to do with the two hours of time. Studios are in the IP business. They only will make movies that have been existing previously in some other form. They want to make movies based on comic books, former television shows, reboots of other movies. So there's very little original material. I belabor the point, you get the idea. As a thought experiment... Fast X is coming out in, what, two weeks? I want you all to look at it as a film, and I want to ask yourself, was it worth it?